Hello <laughs> and welcome <laughs> to First Issue Podcast. <laughs> A spooky special secret edition. <laughs> Spine <laughs> Dinklers. <laughs> We have released a secret podcast out on Halloween for all of our loyal listeners. In fact, to release this podcast, First Issue Club Podcast, the podcast where we review all of the number one hyped issues weekly, God himself came down and he said, Mike D, Caitlin, Craig, and Budget King, ho, 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 what would you like to have for your podcast? And we said to God, we want a secret spooky podcast on Halloween. <laughs> then he took his ball of magic, <laughs> <laughs> threw it on the ground, <laughs> smoke emitted everywhere, and boom, here you have your podcast. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Well, well, well. Praise him. <laughs> Praise Santa Scary God. All right. Oh Who do we have in the club today? And what was the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, Triggering is... question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, God. oh, man. Oh, no. Some, say some, some real <laughs> shit is going to come up here. Rewind, rewind. <laughs> what is the spookiest thing there that's ever go. happened to you? Uh, this is Greg Dr. Acula Lictai. <laughs> <laughs> and the spookiest thing that ever happened to me was um, I heard a door slam in my house once when I was uh, in high school and no one was home so like it may have been a specter or it may have been the fact that i turned on the attic fan <laughs> and <laughs> there was a draft and it's gonna shut the door on its own <laughs> my name is caitlin morosic and the spookiest thing well Co- I, i've seen like shadows and stuff and not known like, we've all seen shadows they're <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like your typical oh, for real, like Caitlin? <laughs> shadow. Ever been out when the sun's out? I was Don't gonna diminish say, our spooky story. I was gonna say this has nothing to do with that, you guys. Um, so when we, when I was growing up, we lived in Oklahoma. We my family moved to this new house, and we were fostering dogs for a while. And one of the dogs dug up like what looks around the size of like a small human's like femur. It was like a big bone. And then in the attic, we found a duffel bag that had a gun and someone's ID in it. What? And my dad took it. And I now have to ask him because now I'm thinking about it. I don't know what happened from here because he took it to the police and he's like, here's what's going down in this house. And that was the last we knew of it as the children of the home. Like, I don't think, I think they were like, yeah, let's not talk about this anymore. You still but the, that's pretty spooky. You still on the gun? No, no. Like, I think he took it all in. Uh, it was like, enter this in as evidence or whatever. Like, look into it. The scariest it scary. part of the story, though, is that you used to live in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I love the thunder. <laughs> I do, too. Ditto. Mm-hmm. Thunder. We're all huge Thunder fans. <laughs> yeah, send us an autograph yeah. jersey. First issue club. FRST. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Russell Westbrook is listening to this. And we're all wearing Car- Russell. Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, we're all wearing uh, Thunder gear right now. Oh, wait. Sorry. We should have told them. We're all wearing masks right now. That's why it's hard to hear us. Yeah. So we're in like spooky, kind of like Frankenstein-y, spidery masks. Yeah, Mike things. D's got like a, a monkey mask on and Caitlin is dressed up like a clown. Mm-hmm. And I am like a, a hammerhead shark I'm with a, scar- a mustache. I'm a scary donut. Yeah, you're terrifying. <laughs> you wouldn't want to eat me. I'm gluten free. <laughs> full of weird jelly. <laughs> you're full of chutney. Uh, these are my friends. <laughs> uh, what is this life? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Mike DeStacy. Scariest thing that's happened to me is similar to Greg's thing once. Uh, I was running a house with like a handful of friends, and they were all just happened to be out of town one weekend. <clears throat> and I'm up in my room by myself. And music just starts blaring downstairs. I have no clue what started it. So I grab a bat and I call my dad. And I'm like, Dad, this is what happened. And I'm going to go downstairs with a baseball bat. And he's just like, all right, look, give me the play by play. (laughs) And I'm just like turning corners and jumping into different rooms. And it was just like my iPod was still hooked up to the speaker system and just randomly started playing. 
I mm. still don't know hmm. if somebody... <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Somebody's watching me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is this before the time of Bluetooth? <clears throat> this was probably before Bluetooth, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine is an imagined reality. We, <laughs> all four of us, were hanging out once at Caitlin's birthday. And uh, we were at, enjoying a nice little lunch. The lunch at, <laughs> that we were being served to us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the server of that lunch came over and uh, grabbed my child, <laughs> and then took my child away <laughs> into the lunchroom, into the abyss, into the kitchen. Uh, yes, Un- yeah, just under the guise of the baby being so cute, she just needed to hold her, and right? then just took off with her. I may be a bad father. I may should not. <laughs> I may should not have let her take put her. up more of a fight. <laughs> yeah, but I was changing my child's diaper the next day, and I looked into her eyes, and I said. There is a good chance you might not be the same child because in a horror <laughs> movie parallel universe, they, that mm-hmm. would have been the perfect switch. Mm-hmm. Little baby mustache. Mm-hmm. That's how you know. <laughs> so, You're could have a demon child, could have a regular child. Don't and- know. <laughs> All right. And that's the club. So, a bunch of comic books came out on October 25th, so many that we couldn't fit them all in and we had to get spooky about it. <laughs> so we threw some Halloween special books into this super secret Halloween special podcast edition of First Issue Club. Today we're going to be covering Jughead, The Hunger, and we're also covering Goosebumps, Monsters at Midnight. Let's get this podcast started. <laughs> Hello, my children of the night. <laughs> Greg, Dr. Acula Lictai here. We're going to be talking Jughead the Hunger. Matt, I'm going to need some like lightning and thunder there. And an A-bomb. All right, so Jughead the Hunger from the popular Archie comic book, Archie. Uh, Jughead is Archie's friend uh, who loves to eat, 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 and just stay out of everyone's business because he's too busy eating. So in this comic book, it is actually a continuation of a one-shot that they did last year called Jughead the Hunger, wherein Jughead finds out that his family is actually, uh, actually has werewolf lineage in it. So uh, when he comes to a certain age, Jughead himself turns into a werewolf and goes on a kind of uncharacteristically gruesome killing spree for the Archie comic world. I mean, it is really vivid, folks. So if you want to if you think you want to give this book to your kids, <laughs> don't. Just do not. Unless it's a demon child that you've been switched yeah, to. Yeah, unless your son's name is Damien <laughs> and your daughter's name is Rosemary. <laughs> In the end of the one shot Jughead attacks Reggie. Uh, and Reggie is the town asshole. Mm-hmm. I was so stoked when Reggie died. Yeah. I was like, let's get rid of him right <laughs> no away. No one's really bummed out that Reggie's no. dead. No, no. Uh, he's just kind of a shithead. He is. Um, he's your Biff. He's, he's the Biff. Who is the, the, who's the pharmaceutical <laughs> guy that like charged a bunch of money for that? Oh, Wu Tang guy. <gasps> yeah. yeah, Milo. He, no, that's also that's Milo. The, yeah, yeah, he's also that. Uh, this guy <laughs> you're talking oh, what about. Is his name? Martin Screlly. Yeah. Is. yeah. He's he the Martin Screlly? Yeah. He is the Archie universe of that mm. guy. Uh, so Reggie's dead, so <coughs> see ya. Raise your cups for that. Yep. And, uh, okay, so, so I mentioned earlier that Jughead, his family tree, has a uh, werewolf lineage, if that isn't crazy enough. But we also find out that Betty Cooper, um, her family is werewolf hunters. So what coincidence is that, that in the same town you have someone who is a werewolf, and then you have someone's family who is werewolf hunters? It's Buffy? Not, it's not, yeah. Uh, and MTV's Teen Wolf? Okay, it's well. It's also not a huge coincidence. <laughs> it's super overdone. that just means they're really good hunters. They've plotted down where there's okay. like, this werewolf lineage. <laughs> I have to <laughs> mute everyone's microphone. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it seemed a little uh, silly. Like Jughead. But first of all, Jug, so it's commonly known that Jughead is an eater. He loves to eat. He's the, the human garbage disposal. Burgers, mostly. Mostly burgers, yeah, at Pops. So it would make more sense for Jughead to be a zombie, would it not? Why? Because I don't follow that reasoning at all. <laughs> because he Jughead, cause Jughead can never be hungry. He's always hungry. Okay. So are zombies. Zombies are always... The hunger for hun- brains. Yeah, the hunger for brains. There's not an Archie zombies? There is a zombie afterlife, uh, afterlife with... 
Archie, which is very good, and I think he actually does become a zombie in that. No. I do love, so Betty and... Her uncle. Cousin. Bo. Cousin, Bo. All right, they're the zombie hunters. Mm -hmm. Werewolf hunters. Werewolf hunters. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Archie and Veronica are trying to track Jughead down. No. Archie yeah. and Betty are? Archie and Archie Betty are. Archie and Betty are. Veronica is mad because Archie and Betty are together. Okay. And let's talk about how much of a psychopath Veronica, Veronica is. is. She's just at home cutting up pictures of Betty. Okay, well, this <laughs> surprises no one. If you used to read, like, those little small... It shouldn't. Which also, I did. Oh, yeah. And she's kind of crazy like that. Yeah. From, Very possessive. Mm-hmm, from those uh, grocery store <laughs> digest yeah. books you can pick up. But... Also, the more baffling part, she's wearing a pixie shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I she is. That oh, weird. yeah. Veronica doesn't seem like the kind of girl that's really into the pixies. Unless it's Archie's shirt. They know they know their audience. I like this book. I like the pixies. Yep. <laughs> God damn it. They picked us. <laughs> Shit. But they're, the, the way they're tracking him is they're stopping at uh, tons of burger joints <laughs> yeah. along like, the path that they know he's traveled, oh. which I loved. I yeah. thought that was so funny. Yeah. Even- yep. Go ahead. So, <laughs> even though he's trying to track him down, in this book, Archie seems like such a weenie. Like he's Archie's like, always seen. Are like you weenie. really yeah. trying to find your friend? Or are you just like not? Are you like half-assing this? Like, but to counterpoint, Betty seems like a maniac. Like she's oh, breaking yeah. jukeboxes in these places, yelling at everyone. There's a whole like two-page spread where she's just like fierce and like. You're almost like, what are you, so, what are you doing? And I get that. I think you're so mad. I think Archie <laughs> realizes that as soon as they find Jughead, they have to kill him, and he doesn't want to oh. kill his best oh. friend. I thought they were trying to find a cure. Were they not? Yeah, the cure is a silver bolt in the forehead. Okay. See ya. Uh, also, Jughead uh, has joined the circus. <laughs> little tropey. A little bit, but it fits for Jughead because okay. Jughead's kind of that uh, offbeat kind of character and joining the circus. Is a familiar trope that he would be nice and acclimated to. So uh, when Jughead is uh, joining the circus, he meets this young woman, and this young woman uh, starts chatting with Jughead and flirting with him. And it's kind of known that um, Jughead's a kind of an asexual character. He doesn't really – he's more attracted to hamburgers, really, than <laughs> than <laughs> genders. But this, this young girl's flirting with him, and she alludes to meeting up with him again and talking and chatting and maybe going on a date. And then a few pages later, you find her dismembered body <laughs> in the woods. And you think, like, for an Archie comic, it's just going to be, like, alluded to. Like, there's maybe, like, a little pool of blood. No, her so fucking guts are just spilled out brutal. all over. Yeah. <laughs> it that is was, sickening. It's weird to have that juxtaposition there because Jughead is, like, so you mentioned he's, it's kind of assumed that he's asexual. He's kind of apathetic in general. So, like... He kind of laments on all of the people he has killed or injured or something. And then he's, like, looking at this girl that he just met that he realizes that he attacked and killed and brutalized. And he's just like, oh, I feel so bad. Well, on to the next. Like, shrug. Like, I. it was weird to have that sociopathic almost. Well, w- worth mentioning, I think, is that he did tie himself up to prevent himself he did. from murdering again he on did. a full moon's night. Ooh. But Spooky. we find out that someone unchained him. Yeah, None of the chains were broken that he chained himself up with. You would think that this book would be more conservative with its branding. Because Archie, Jughead, Betty, and Veronica are supposed to be these like sweet hometown characters. I mean, these, these were... Does that mean anything different, though, when it says Archie's Madhouse? Archie's it? Madhouse, I think that's supposed to be the umbrella for, like, Archie. Horror Archie stuff. Yeah. Archie goes Sabrina. crazy. Sabrina. Yeah. There's, there's been enough oh, yeah, horror Archie stuff. Of... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that doesn't that still doesn't give the right for it to be so gory and bloody, which I love, by the way. That's I, <laughs> When I read this story, I was like, here are these white, suburban, uh, high school, like, popular kids getting ravaged by a werewolf <laughs> plague, and I am into that. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is super novice of me, and I've I've read a handful of, of uh, Archie comics. Jughead ever explain his crown, or is it just his Charlie Brown? That's his. That's uh, his Charlie Brown. Mm-hmm. Is this what he does? Yep, that's Linus's security blanket. Okay, Jughead's hat. Yeah, okay. this comic book was hard to find. We couldn't really find it. Sold out everywhere. Yeah, which is crazy. I got the last issue at my shop. 
Mine's all dinged up. I got the last one, too. If you hit us up on Twitter, your first one that listens to this episode, I'll send you my dinged up copy. <laughs> yeah, we will. And a phishing email. <laughs> <laughs> we'll copy it to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, F-I-R-S-T, First Issue Club, at Twitter. <laughs> All right, I am Caitlin Morosic, and I covered Goosebumps. What is it, Monsters at Midnight? Yeah. Written by Jeremy Lambert, illustrated by Chris Finoglio. Finoglio? Uh, it follows Mia, Jenny, and Grandma. And they are kind of, they're just having a ball. The parents are away on vacation or work or you don't know. But they are staying with Grandma for about a month over summer. And... Uh, Mia is, there's something, she injured her leg or something, so she's on crutches. Uh, Jenny is me in, I am Jenny in real life. She has (laughs) asthma and allergies (laughs) and is super excited about books. And I think that what this is getting to, I, I, it's just going to be kind of like a compilation of different Goosebumps stories. But I wanted to ask that question and open it up because they reference, Jelly Jam, which I loved. I loved that book. And then um, Welcome to Horrorland and Don't Go in the Basement. That was actually one of my favorite quotes in this book. Jenny, the girl who loves books, she's like, Mia, I got to find out the ending. It's called Don't Go in the Basement. And Mia, they go in the basement. (laughs) (laughs) She's like freaking out. Just like I think a lot of people were younger, like when we were younger reading these books. So I I don't know if it's going to be just a retelling in a mashup fashion or... They just live in a verse where all of these stories happen. So they encounter them in some way, form, or fashion. Like she mentions wanting to be with her friends at Camp Jelly Jam. And then they end up finding themselves, spoil, spoilies, <laughs> in Welcome to Horror Land. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure where they're going to go with this. Goosebumps, to me, was probably the book series that got me into reading, like around first or second grade. And... So I just started reading them like crazy and then to the point that like we were we would get to the library and we would run to the Goosebumps section to see if they had like a new one come in. But like that was all like kind of Gen 1 Goosebumps. So like this dummy character that comes about like kind of uh, wasn't one that I was like necessarily familiar with. Like things like that. There's something about like don't feed your pet or something like that. I um, fell the, off the guinea a little pigs bit. or whatever. Yeah, I think I was more uh, Gen 1. If, yeah. Okay. Any Anyway, um, I always pictured them animated, and I really wished that the Goosebumps show, when they created it, was animated. But wasn't it live action? Yeah, mm-hmm. like, it was. Like, like, like mm-hmm. Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yes. So to me, this is like, I love, I loved this book. I thought it was like super fun. and like I did too. Really. Yeah. I never really read Goosebumps books, and I kind of forgot partway through that I was reading a, a kid's comic book. And I was like, something super fucked up is about to happen. <laughs> so they did a good job at like creating yeah. suspense yeah. a little bit. I love it. But yeah, this this the characters were fun. I love this little girl who's like a step away from being the boy in the bubble. <laughs> she was like, so oh, yeah. gets dust blown on her and almost dies. <laughs> Much like Caitlin. Yeah, it's me. I love them like escaping from their grandmother's house mm-hmm. before midnight. Mm-hmm. Right? They go to this bookstore, which I would have never had the guts to do as a child, and then just, like, all utter craziness has happened. She has to speak backwards for oh, a yeah, period of time. Oh, yeah, that was so cool. There's, like, yeah. There are sections in this bookstore that apparently affect you if you interact with the books on the certain shelves. Like, there's an entire shelf of, it's labeled backwards books in, back like, the letters are backwards. And all of a sudden, she just starts speaking. She thinks she's speaking normally. She's speaking backwards like it which is kind of cool oh so cool this cursed Fun what is read. it what was it called cursed editions bookstore <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah there's an earlier panel where we see the children are being stalked by a some sort of monster thing so i guess they were coaxed in it was an Ooh. earlier plan mm. to get these two hey, ch- children call. yeah that guy comes back in particular right yes, that, yes. that monster comes back towards the end of the book we talked about this a little bit with Ghostbusters, but you assume that any new jumping on point is to kind of get a wider fan base or bring more people into it than like than, than were part of the fan base originally. Uh, so this is for kids, correct? Yes, 100%. Okay. Yeah. 
but the audience that is nostalgic for this is not. So I, it's going to be it, a lot of but books maybe trying their to walk kids that tightrope. Yeah. I also think Goosebumps has been. Is it still going on? I could be wrong there. Maybe. I they made no that clue. movie. Wasn't there with, a movie uh, with Jack Black? Jack Black. Black. TJ's a fan. Of that movie or of Jack Black? <laughs> the fan in the series. Yeah. <laughs> TJ, tweet us at First Issue Club on Twitter and tell us. <laughs> yeah, but they, I didn't think about that. You can did, share they, that with your kids. Yeah. The movie. Yeah, the movie came out. So. Yeah. Maybe so there's a frame of reference. Ever seen the movie? Is this the first Goosebumps comic book? There's no way. As far as I, I know. Have a, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't follow it that closely. Th- there's but. no way Goosebumps has been a property for like the last 20 years and no one's made a comic right. book of it, it yet. Seem hard to I'm assuming since it's got the subtitle Monsters at Midnight yeah. that there's been a Goosebumps book already. When I came into it, I was thinking, oh, we're just reading another arc of a Goosebumps book. I kind of assumed there was more Goosebumps books, but this comic book hits a home run. Mm-hmm. It was like totally enjoyable. Yeah. R- really like a fun... It, I don't mind teen reads. Like or YA stuff and things like that. Like if the art strikes me and I'm in the comic book shop, I throw it on the stack of the other <laughs> ten <laughs> comic books I'm buying that day. Uh, and yeah, there's some fun, enjoyable reads. And the best part is, it was spooky. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's how the doctor broke news to you? <laughs> Greg, like on Halloween, like they really You're blind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you may wonder why you can't see. <laughs> the comet can't be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just really dedicated to ha- uh, Halloween. Like anything that happens on that day, anyone's just like super spooky about it. You pissing blood for a week <laughs> means you only have three more days to live. <laughs> you should have come in sooner. <laughs> we could have caught this. <laughs> Cue the organ music. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Is your frap? She knows. <laughs> I wish we lived in that world where like Halloween was like just as big a deal as Christmas. It's the best. That holiday. sounds like a great concept for a movie, <laughs> um, like a town or something. Right? Yeah. Let's keep uh, riffing on this. Town. <laughs> what? <laughs> Patented. Uh, it is the best holiday though, because not how many holidays have demons, witches, bad like killers and shit. Well, Christmas has Krampus. Yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Thanksgiving has <laughs> dead turkeys. my uncles. Dead. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> <Dead Turkeys. laughs> Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That I, what, what? Was that a demon? A demon came on our podcast. Oh my gosh! <laughs> get out of get out of the audio recording, Mister Demon. What, did, what yeah. did you think of Jughead? It was all right. <laughs> get into the ears of our listeners. Oh boy! Find me at. First issue club podcast demon on Twitter. <laughs> hey, baby. I'm coming out of your speaker now. I hope you're listening to me at work. Oh, uh, fuck, bitch. <laughs> hope I'm on your speakers. <laughs> <laughs> that, could, that could all be cut. The, the, yeah, the, this riff could have been way cooler. <laughs> when yeah. this riff started, I was like, this will be fun. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was the best part of it. <laughs> yep. You sound like gremlins. <laughs> no, it's not me though. Okay. It's the yeah. get this out of the audio recording. <laughs> <laughs> Who keeps doing that? <laughs> so spooky. Who's that little kid in the corner? Yeah. Oh, There's... Okay. <laughs> so that was goosebumps. <laughs> this is a haunted podcast, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Should we sell the rights to it on eBay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. This <laughs> haunted is a podcast one? for sale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> serious inquiries only. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for joining our haunted <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I think there's a gas leak in here. <laughs> it's so spooky. <laughs> the CO2 levels are at dramatic levels. <laughs> <laughs> First Issue Club is a proud partner of the Fountain City spooky family of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> We're recorded in case you are haunted studios. See ya. <laughs> Greg Lichtai signing off. I'll show myself out. Mark Stacy saying bye bye, babies. <laughs> 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 <laughs>